What's up, everybody? The recovery. As always, if you ain't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Become part of the recovery family. Hit the notification bell. That way, you get notifications whenever we go live. We also do meetings for any addicts welcome on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, 8:30 Eastern time. Guys, we got an awesome interview coming at you today. We're upgrading where I record at. Usually, I'm upgrading the room, trying to get it soundproofed a little better, make it uh, upgrade the quality. So. Guys, the next month we're going to definitely see some upgrade in the channel quality. But let's jump into the interview. What's up, buddy? Tell everybody who you are in a little bit. What's up, everybody? My name is Joey. I'm from Lexington Park, Maryland, about an hour out from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I got a YouTube channel. Check me out. Parole Prison Show 92, baby. I'm on there trying to help people every day as well as helping myself, and I'm learning from everybody, including this channel. So can you tell us how you got into using hard drugs? So how I got into um, heroin, I guess, needless to say, that's how it ended up for me anyway. But how I got into that was not by starting with heroin. I didn't go all out. I didn't plan to be a heroin addict and do hardcore drugs. Um, I never uh, believed in doing them before. I was totally against them. And if somebody did pills, I'd say, oh, you know, Joe Blow's a freaking pill head. Don't trust him. Don't, you know. But anyway... Long story short, my best friend that actually passed away from an addiction when I was in prison, um, from his addiction when I was in prison, uh, like the last year, I think, before I got out, he died. He was found in a shed like a week later, the maggots eating his body. Yeah, that's how it ends up. Anyway, I got addicted with him, man, pretty much. I guess that's how it started because he stole some uh, perk tens from his stepdad stepdad smoked weed and took perk tens like one or two a day for his back he was a mechanic you know had a bad back anyway he would steal his weed we would smoke weed eventually he stole the pills and said you know what i'm gonna take one you take one with me man take one with me and i'll take one you know that thing and i had such a tight bomb with him he was like a brother to me so i'm like well if he'll do it i'll do it so the bottom line is experimenting that's what started all this do not experiment with drugs, meaning when you see new drugs, stuff you have never done before, F that. Do not even touch it. Say, nah, I'm good. No. Like like they say, just say no. I know that's harder than just saying no, though. So that's why you, you can't go by just say no. You got to know what comes with that pill. And a lot of people don't know. And that's why they don't just say no. Um... You know, I didn't know if I just took one, it would end up to thousand others in heroin and needles. No, I never thought that in a million years. But for me, it started by taking that Perk 10, and I loved it, and my brain loved it, and my soul loved it, and I just knew I loved it. That feeling was the best feeling I've ever felt in my life while I was on it. Now, I did not get strung out right away. We took them a few times. I was also drinking at the time. I was like 17, 18, so my body was also still growing a little bit at the time. I was still very strong, had a bunch of energy, so it didn't hurt me as badly as when you get older and when you keep taking them day by day by day. So anyway, I was able to still get a good job, buy a nice car, start working, and pretty much leave the pills alone. You know, maybe once every month or so I might take one if I can get my hands on it. If not, I'm not out here looking for it or spending my check on it, put it like that. Um, but that is how it started because of that feeling. That feeling was never forgotten in my brain. So, my other best friend, well, another one of my close friends, I'm drinking at his house. His uh, brother's one of my best friends, too. They're both my friend. Uh, his brother's upstairs hanging with his baby mama, and they're doing Perk 30s. They just stole somebody's whole prescription of Perk 30s, little small blue pills. Now... He says, oh, I'm, I'm drinking, partying, whatever, you know. He says, he'll oh, give me one if I snort it. But if not, you know, I'm not giving you one. But I'm like, dude, whatever, fuck it, I don't even want one anyway, this and that, you know, and keep drinking. Because I asked him for one, I was going to pop one, because I had never snorted one at the time. Um, anyway, I think like the next day or two, I kept coming over, because that was like the party house, you know, where I'd party after I get off work. And uh, eventually... I had worked my ass off one day, I was very tired, you know, and I was like, F it, let me try this out, you know, drinking gets old after a while, so I experimented, once again, and I took it to another level by sniffing that whole 30, <sighs> boy, uh, it was the best thing ever, but it was the worst thing ever, and, and you don't want that, if it ain't the best thing ever without being the worst thing ever too, you don't want it, 
You don't want it because the worst thing ever. Yeah, I mean that very serious when I say the worst. Um, so once I snort that 30, it was game time. And then I did want more. Yes. And then I was buying a 30 or two out my check. And then my friend Travis would buy 30s and we'd split them. And then I would buy them the next day and we split them. So we were doing them pretty much every day almost until eventually, yeah, we were just hooked. We were hooked. You know, we found somebody that was getting rid of them for the low at the time. And then eventually he found a doctor that gave them to him for free. And uh, after you take them so many times, your body gets used to them and you need more, 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 more. And the more you get used to them, the more bad off you're going to be. And that's how it all started for me, man. That's, that's the beginning. That is the beginning of that addiction. So my advice is stay away from fake friends because if they are offering you drugs that you know are bad, like anything other than weed, and I'm not even telling you to smoke weed, but like weed's one thing if they pass the blunt, the joint, the bong. But if they're passing pills, crack, heroin, cocaine, come on, man. Come on. It's 2019. You see what it does to our lives, and you're listening to this right now. Do not touch that shit, man. It's going to ruin your life and make you a punk. You're going to be a slave to that drug, I promise you. You are going to be the whore, and the freaking drug is going to be the pimp, and you're going to be getting whored out all over the place, man. Literally, because it's going to have you ripping and running up and down the street, stealing from your mom, stealing from your brother, your sister, lying to this, lying to your job. You're going to lose everything. And that's what happened to me in the long run. But that's how it all started. Very simple way how it all started. Wasn't all bad when it started, was it? Exactly. So what was the point that you, you know, knew you had to quit and that something had to change? What woke you up? You know, what things happened? So pretty much the reason that I decided I like had to get clean was me overdosing in my mom's bathroom, my sister giving me CPR, my mom witnessing it, me running from the cops at my mom's house, ending up in the dark woods, stealing people's uh, little solar powered lamp so I could stick it in the ground in the woods and shoot up cocaine. And then I shot up so much I was hallucinating, couldn't even see how much I shot up, thought I was going to have a heart attack. Um, me getting kicked out of my mom's because I ran from the cops and had a warrant out for my arrest because I robbed somebody inside of a grocery store. I took the rent money from right from their hand when they were paying their bills at the Western Union counter. Um, and then I was sleeping in abandoned houses, people finding me in there the next morning, kicking my feet. Hey, you got to get up, get out. Uh, me burglarizing homes, taking stuff, you know, and me, you know, I had already stole from my own family and friends and, and it just hurt me inside that I had done those things and couldn't even believe it. So for me, that was like the just wake up call of all wake up calls when I found myself homeless in the wintertime, breaking into houses just to sleep at night um, and shooting up so many drugs in my veins that I did not care if I died or not really. Like it just did not matter at that point. I absolutely had nothing. I didn't have my son, my mom. I couldn't talk to anybody because the cops were looking for me. And um, yeah, shortly after that, I actually ended up going to prison. And that's where the change happened. So what's life like? Awesome interview, guys. Go check him out. Subscribe to his channel. Guys, you know, we're going to go do a part two, go deeper. He breaks down how the addiction is so strong and what it does to us and how, you know, how it breaks down our morals so well. So we're going to do a part two with him next week, guys. As always, y'all stay up and stay sober.